to Triforce episode 15? Um, it could uh, be. Yeah, yeah, you're, it is. <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, welcome, you're welcome, right. Welcome, friends. Good one. Welcome yeah. back. Hey, welcome to Triforce episode 15, he says with assured confidence. Yeah, yeah. So if, uh, if you're a regular listener, of course, episode uh, 14, which went out last week now, um, was the infamous one where all of us were very knowledgeable about Brexit and Bremain. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that this week. Yeah. We just had a discussion before we started and we said, you know what? I think we're, we're too advanced in what we know about it. And the average Joe just doesn't understand, like... They're not on our level sort yeah. of thing. I mean, like Michael so, Gove said, the British people are sick of hearing from experts. So we're experts. Yeah. We, we're going to shut up about it. We're not going to yeah, talk Yeah, we're going to talk about other stuff. It like, does feel um, like a big part of the news, but I'm glad we're avoiding it. In other, in, yes, by the way, about episode numbers, someone did actually uh, donate yeah. when I was streaming and asked me not to call one of the episodes 13. Yeah. They oh, yeah. So they get there. triggered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're afraid Trisca of the number 13. I sort of said, sure. Is that what it's called? Triska, yeah. Triska decophobia. Yeah. And um, I forgot and just did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I maybe, True. yeah. Sorry, sorry to that guy um, or girl, probably guy. Let's be, let's be real. So uh, what, has Whoa, been what does that mean though? What does that mean? Can we just backtrack a bit? What, what do you mean by well, that? Um, well, I think it, just if we do a quick straw poll of our audience, yeah. I think a lot of them are gentle, gentlemen. Well, see, this is where I disagree. I think our demographic is definitely 18 to 21 year old uh, blonde size eight uh, women. Size right? eight? That sounds tiny. Yeah. It is. I don't yeah, want yeah. the, I don't want this, no skinny bitches. No, no, no. Well, I mean, they're like, yeah, I <laughs> we guess. We want like Pammies. We want like 35 We to want size eight and a half. year old. Yeah, yeah. Baywatch expert. I mean, she's not I'm, not, I'm not being 45. funny. I, I'm 40 now, right? So 45, yeah. 55. When I when I see girls that are like hot 18 year olds, I'm thinking yeah. they're too young. They're too young. I mean, I'm an old man now. It's it's yeah. uh, morally questionable. If I would have I'm the total to opposite. To I life. mean, I'm almost as old as you, and I don't think that at all. I'm like, hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> I mean, I don't, <laughs> in my mind, I say that. Obviously, in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would never, I would never articulate that out outwards because, you know, I'm a horrible recluse and, you know, I feel uncomfortable around other human beings. But yeah. uh, in my mind, I'm like fucking Casanova. Like I'm, you know, of course, you know, I'm, I'm hitting it. I mean, what uh, I'm saying is, I, I'm not, I'm not one of those. I'm not into grannies. You know what I mean? I'm not like, no, I'm not into grannies. No, but I'm saying like, no. I, I think if you can't appreciate a woman in her 30s or 40s. I think you're looking at them the whole wrong way. And uh, I think beauty is not just about being a hot 18-year-old nymphomaniac. You know, I'm saying that there are other flavors to the yeah. lady it's spectrum. It's not all about that, but in some ways it is kind of about that at the same time. <laughs> because Sexuality you know, is very fluid. Yes. You, yeah. you can be attracted to all sorts of things. It is if, yeah. I'm, if I'm feeling... Uh, Ponies, oh, very fluid. Anime. A little... I mean, at the very end of that spectrum, there's the the guys that are attracted to feeding um their their loved ones, you know, like twenty happy meals from McDonald's Chubby every chases. day. Yeah, the and feeders keeping, and keep, uh, keeping them big. Yeah, yeah. That that and that's not cool. That's not cool. sanding down like their like leathery, <laughs> chafed skin <laughs> fragments and stuff like. <laughs> It's, a, it's like uh, yeah. you know, you know the way you know the way women when they make foie gras, they they force feed those, oh no, those ducks or stop. whatever. I'm wondering if yeah, they're, well. they're force feeding the ladies to make them the sexual equivalent of foie gras. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, because they sit around, Lewis. They can't get. They can't. They can't. They're not mobile, right? Because they <laughs> they're fed so much, so their skin chafes big time and gets like all like uh, hard and leathery in spots. And oh um, it's really important to like, with a with a like a huge nail file, you have to like sand I it really down a need bit. Need to just stop you. To keep on top. From going down this path, it's it's cool. Whatever you're into, yeah. Keep it to yourself. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. you know what that is. That is. It's so funny. That's like the typical response that people have when they talk about other people's sex lives. Is they're like, whatever you do in the privacy bedroom. Don't care about it, but just just keep it to yourself. It's like I don't yeah. want to hear or see your alternative lifestyle. Just keep but, keep but keep it locked again, behind closed doors, should. underground. Go live underground like a mole, 
and just but, live there and do what you no, like. And that's fine and then by feed me. your girlfriend and have sex with her like a mole or whatever and just just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> don't want to hear it. I don't want to no, see it or hear it. Just I think you're build completely a concrete wrong. bunker and live in there <laughs> and that's yeah. fine by me. Well, how fucking generous. Thank you. I can live in a hole now. Fine and do in what that I like. case. Let's have a fucking week where we celebrate it. Let's have Chubby Chase week, right? It's like <laughs> oh, it you can can't be after see Gay that. Pride Month, right? It's not and Chubby it Chase. Like it's a feeder. Week. It's a feeder. And we're like, well, they've got to call it nice something we'll nice. Have feeder though, week. Right? <laughs> oh They're not God. cool with that. They, we'll have furries week, and then no, there already is week. one. No, it's not official, but we'll there have is a week one. for everyone. Okay, All and right. then th- that way there'll be well, because well, look, you have to like you know say that you're cool with like these 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 minorities, even if you're not. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. <laughs> it's, <laughs> why are we? Why are we? Why are we <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, dig oh that hole God. any further, Lewis, you're going to bump into some uh, some people you've buried on the yeah, ground. Yeah, you're going to bump into a weird mole what man did you say? Did you feeding say his wife pigmies? KFC and having sex with her. Pick <laughs> <laughs> me? I was just saying, where am I going to dig through to? The fucking mole man place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bunch of mole men in a bunker. <laughs> Uh, Jesus you Christ. You told us to keep it to the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there I was, feeding my wife KFC, and in popped some guy's head. And some, we weren't expecting to see anyone down here some in the bunker. S- but, uh, some skinny uh, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. We should have skinny appreciation week as well. Oh, you know, it's God. We should have asshole appreciation week as well. Exactly. Uh, we, don't, yeah. we don't big them up. Nearly enough. Do you, you mean know? people who are assholes or actual physical assholes? The anatomical assholes. I think week asshole. one can be for the people, okay. and then week two can be for literally assholes, <laughs> whether they're bleached or like they're just au naturel or whatever. You know, let's yeah. let's celebrate those things. They work hard. Do you Man, know, they do you know what? I, I'd like to raise this drink to functioning assholes everywhere. Yeah. Congratulations oh. if you're in possession of a functioning asshole. I I appreciate mine on a daily basis when yeah. I think I need a poop, but I'm not going to panic because I know that my, my bunghole has this covered. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get to the toilet. And then he's like, cool, we can do this now. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's an amazing piece of evolution. Imagine where we'd be. It really is. Imagine where we'd be if we had to shit where we stood constantly like horses and cows. You'd never get anything done. Oh, man, that'd be so awkward. Sex eh? would be terrible. Are worse, too. Uh, they, horses just just shit anywhere. They just stand there and it just just comes out. Like it's so weird. Like why do if, they do uh, that? Well, I I think that if we've met like an alien race, okay, there's a good chance they're not just going to be you know the Star Trek between five foot eight, six foot two, nice nice teeth, you know, yeah. American accent. That's with pretty like unlikely. A, with some purple paint on their face. Yeah, and, and a, a couple Polish of pasty, bumps, like super glued to the <laughs> yeah, forehead. Yes. it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a horse monster that poops everywhere, and it's gonna yeah. just walk around the ship. There's gonna be poop everywhere. We're like, oh my god, what the hell is this? And they're like, yeah, we don't have an asshole. We yeah. just poop all over the fucking place. <laughs> Greetings, humans. Like, how did you, how did you get off of the planet? Well, yeah. you know, we we enslaved this minor race who go around cleaning up all the poop, and they use it for energy. Oh, Jesus. Like, oh. Jesus. Now, I, I hope they bring <laughs> back Star Trek and, and you can write for it, Lewis. That's like some Gene Roddenberry level level yeah, stuff yeah. right there. Pooping horse monsters. We are the pooping horse people of Horse Poop 14. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some Futurama level garbage. Kirk the Bridge, we have found the pooping horse monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't help. <laughs> <laughs> prepare a prepare an away party. All right, hands up who wants to go on the away party to the planet of shitting horsemen. Anyone? Yeah. Spock? No. Nuka. Spock would be all up for that. Yeah, he'd be, he'd like, be like, it is merely Captain, this is, is illogical. I must see these creatures shitting in their natural habitat. Captain, that's my fetish. <laughs> <laughs> we, we better have gay horse asshole appreciation week next time. <laughs> Because when I come yeah. back... Is this yeah. Spock? Is that Spock talking? It's me doing Sips' is Spock. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a mix of data from time to time, and then it like it sort of transitions back to Spock. But yeah, it's just that sort of robotic, like, you know, they make that's, decisions that based on really dumb things. Star Trek, whether yeah. it's 
yeah vulcan or a robot or a yeah Borg or whatever they get yeah. like they're all they're the not same. emotional it the, the key trait is they have no capacity for emotion so everything is very logical with it's them. really easy so to act because they have this permanent sort of straight sort of slightly yeah like slightly confused or angry look on their face depending you know the, on which they when, are when yeah. you really look at those characters they i mean everybody loves spock right and data and they were like two popular characters in the show but i Look at them, and I mean, I get why they put them in there, but all they use them for, 99% of the time, is explaining complicated shit to the viewers by explaining it to the idiot humans that happen to be in charge of the ship. That's literally yeah. their job. Is Their captain's like, full speed ahead! And Mr. Data would be like, wait a second, Captain, because here's a very reasonable scientific reason why we shouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Data's got it, yeah, thanks for the advice. Yeah. All right, uh, full speed, not half speed ahead. He's like... Looks at data for approval. Data like winks, gives him a little thumbs up. He's like, "Sweet." He's like, <laughs> yeah. well, "Just fucking put the robots in charge, for Christ's sake." Data yeah, never, he never fucks up. <laughs> but yeah, but the, occasionally they got to take one for the team as well. They got to go on those tricky away missions by themselves, where they're very emotionally charged. Like, um, like for instance. If they came across a race of aliens who um, really took a lot of delight in slaying unicorns, for example. Um, I mean, Picard would not be the best man for that job, right? He'd get down there and he'd just be like a blubbering mess. He'd be crying because these people would be like, hello, humans, and just like, you know, slitting a unicorn's throat or whatever. But you send Data down there and he would just do that stupid fucking facial expression he does, you know, where he, yeah. his sort Cox of like face goes side. back a bit. Yeah, and his eyes like open a little bit or whatever. Yeah. Peculiar. These people seem to be slaying unicorns. Hmm. And then he has to like check check his receptors or whatever and stuff but <laughs> he'd be able to you know he'd be able to like put a, a really good trip report together uh and present it back to the board and to picard and stuff in in a fashion where picard wouldn't get too upset yeah, because maybe. he of course loves horses so and um and any sort of um creature that's related to a horse if so you, like but the thing is data is always going to uphold <laughs> the fucking first director or the prime directive, right? Data's the, yeah. the guy. If you program data, don't fuck up the prime directive. He's going to be like, cool. And he's going to have the perfect logic, like Spock did. Like, yeah. well, these are the guys. If if Starfleet was real, they would never put Kirk in charge of a ship. In a heartbeat, they would say, get Spock. Get Spock. He yeah. can do the exploration because he's the guy who's going to meet them shooter. and go, it's not logical. We wouldn't do it. Prime Directive, you all, which makes sense. we got to be ch chill about this. We can't fuck with the oh, unicorn, guys. Oh, fuck's sake. I yeah, mean, yeah. I have a real problem with Prime Directive. the Vulcans in, in Star Trek, okay? It's almost like, like the, the you know, every, like the holodeck, okay? The holodeck is a liability, you know, it waiting is, yeah. to happen. It's, it's gone wrong so many times. So many people have almost died. So many times it's almost like fucking destroy the ship. It's yeah. ridiculous, okay? It's super dangerous. And Vulcans are the same. They're like bullshit like there's always every every sort of seventh or eighth episode someone there's some medical illness or some bullshit that's going on with someone where they've gone crazy for some reason and yeah. medical science is is at a loss okay they're like oh all the, their brain chemistry is all scrambled what are we going to do we can't the, the neural stimulator's not working and the vulcan is like step aside how about we try a mind meld? It's like, no, <laughs> mind melds are universally Now is not trash. the time for a mind meld, jeez. <laughs> for <laughs> fuck's sake, what is it with you guys, a fucking mind meld? You're obsessed with them. It's like, yeah. I suggest we try a the mind meld. No, is that your only fucking suggestion? Yeah, the, the Vulcan death grip is kind of bullshit too because it's just you know I know I understand that like you could cripple somebody if you have like intricate knowledge on pressure points and stuff like that, but I don't know like maybe a, like a proper karate chop or like a drop kick or something would have been better for Vulcans. Uh, oh, maybe. Uh, honestly, like no one has ever got no no captain has ever gone. Oh my god, this man's gone completely crazy. Does anyone know a Vulcan so we could do a mind melt? It's like or a death how, grip on him to well, exactly. incapacitate so, him. Yeah. Well, they're this like crew of like Vulcan ninjas, like you know, going around death gripping people. It's, it's mental. Anyway, maybe there is. Maybe yeah. I missed that episode. Maybe. Holy shit. Yeah. So, so what, anyway, what else have you guys been doing other than watching Star Trek this week? Well, listen, I got a. I actually thought about this before I came out here to record this with you guys. I do actually have some exciting news from my household. Oh, um, yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got a new kitchen sink tap. Oh, you son of a bitch! It's fucking nice too. It's one of those ones that goes up really high, so you can actually get the kettle like right in the sink under it, and there's still place for lots of dirty plates and stuff to pile up in there. Mm -hmm. 
and um, the water flow is exceptional. God, I, I thought mean, there was, uh, you know, you really built that up, Sip. So I, I well, thought you were going to say it feels we're, like I'm in a holiday home. We're it's expecting, so, or we won the lottery. It's, it's almost or... extravagant. No, yeah, no, nothing that exciting. But I mean, we've had a, this old kitchen sink tap that was leaking for quite some time, and um, I'm pretty lazy. I never get around to stuff. Right. And then finally, I phoned up the plumber, and I was like, "Are you guys able to come here and fit?" a kitchen sink tap and he's like yeah of course so i went and bought one um and then he came down and fit it in like 20 minutes and then when he left i was like fuck i probably could have done that but i was glad yeah. that he did em- it instead. emasculated but happy with the new tap yeah because uh, the thing is he it, the difference was he left and there wasn't a big mess or a big puddle of water or anything like he put all the stuff back under the sink and and whatever if it was me there would be big mess um there'd be stuff everywhere and people would, I would be mad even at know me. where to fucking so, start with that. Like, yeah, did he, so I'm glad that I just... turn the water off? Or, yeah. I have no idea. Where you to don't know begin, if like, you have to turn the water off to change the tap. What do you unscrew? No, there's like pipes that have their the own little off. knobs on them, it, like under your sink, and you just turn those yeah. off. If you don't, it's, 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 like on the tap... Like if you if you have I've I've actually fitted taps and changed washers and I can do all that stuff because you can right. look up how to do it and it's really not like anything involving plumbing. Yeah. Like you've got to have the right pressure and the right kind of pipe and it's got to be the right width and you've got to have the right you know bends in and all that. No yeah, way. Yeah, like yeah. that's that's super skilled stuff, obviously. Yeah. But talking about changing a tap, come on now, it's not it's not difficult. Well, in my defense, he did come to look at the boiler primarily, Uh, and then it was just like, oh, do you mind fitting this while you're here? And he was like, yeah, okay. So, you know, it was like two two birds with one stone sort of thing. But, you know, if I was really, you know, if I was really sort of gung-ho about fitting a a kitchen sink tap, I probably could do it. Can you say gung-ho anymore? Why can't you say gung ho? Uh, why couldn't you say gung ho? What's wrong? Sounds with that? racist. Gung ho against who? Against like the gungs of Manchuria. <laughs> Great <laughs> offense it, against uh, against hoes. Uh, well, I don't know. It just I don't know. It sound you know. It's one of those things that you're not. We're not allowed to say certain things. We're not allowed to call it's it. It's a Chinese, Chinese phrase. Whispers. It it's is. The, it's the yeah. Um, nice. It's a it's a an anglicized pronunciation of and forgive me here, Chinese speakers, gung ho. Which is also sometimes <laughs> anglicized <laughs> as Kung Ho. I'm trying my best here. There was, I'm pretty sure that there was a G.I. Joe figure um, named Gung Ho. Let's have so a look. There's that as well. I'm pretty sure there oh. was actually. I think, yeah. Fucking, or did they? Yeah, or did... He was the dude. He looked a bit like Blaine from Predator. With the, he had yes. the flat hat, big burly guy, massive yeah. gun. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. Real American Is that him? heroes. Yo, Joe! God, Did I you ever watch G. that? Joe when I was a kid. I mean, this was yeah. the 80s. First appearance, yeah, yeah, 1983. Yeah. That was right in my wheelhouse right there. Yeah, I was three at the time, but I grew into them. I, I had a whole bunch of G.I. Joes by the tender age of six. Wait, I'm sure. dude, I'm about to ruin your appreciation for Gung Ho. Are you ready? Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gung Ho's real name is Etienne R. Lafitte. Oh, that doesn't ruin it. That it makes does. Him, it's it's kind of like Thierry Henry. Yeah, you but know? no guy I'm, called I'm like, Etienne cool. R. Lafitte is going to be like, Je suis Gung Ho, let's go and jump over the top. He's going to be like, maybe we should go and have a <laughs> cup of coffee first. <laughs> eh, 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 les garçons, je suis Gung Ho. <laughs> <laughs> Allez, Gung Ho, oui, avec moi. No, no. He, lo- he lost his French accent and he became more like the guy who cuts himself shaving oh, in The Predator. Wait, he's Cajun. He's Cajun. Oh, I see. The good kind Even. of uh, Etienne Arlefi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Etienne Arlefi. From New Orleans. Eventually moved to New Orleans, earning a reputation as a bare knuckle brawler and knife fighter. Joined the Marines at age 18 and was the distinguished honor graduate from Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island. He nice. was attended Airborne School, Recondo School, Marine Ordnance School, Administration School at Camp Johnson, and is a qualified expert in all NATO infantry small arms, most Warsaw packed infantry weapons, and the XM-76 grenade launcher. I love the G.I. Joe lore. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so amazing, and it's not appreciated enough. Like, nobody looks back into the into this stuff. Like, Sergeant Slaughter, remember him? Mm. And then there was Jinx. There was a, a woman named Jinx and Lady Jane, and there was Duke, and who else? Um, Which was that guy? That you know all there was that. the guy who was the American football player, and I think they called him like the fridge or something. Really? And they made a GI Joe of him. Yeah, I've got he was here like, uh, GI GI Joe online exclusive seven packs. Here's the 
The, the assault on Cobra Island squad. Snake Eyes? Remember Snake Eyes, yeah, the ninja yeah, he guy? Was the he was blind? He was fucking he got cool, Outback, man. Holy shit. Rakondo, Zap. Rakondo. Chuckles. What the fuck? Hit and run. Chuckles. I remember Chuckles. <laughs> I fucking, I remember Chuckles. He had like camo pants and then he had like a beige dress shirt. Yeah. And he had blonde hair. And then there's Am I right? Hit and Run. You are right. And there's a guy just called Wetsuit. Wetsuit. And yeah. then here's the They almost here's sound like Transformers. It's they I think it. the guys who made G.I. Joe made Transformers as well. I don't, they uh, like or, or Americanized I, I think, uh, the Transformers, Transformers. was Mattel. Yeah. I could be wrong. I could be it's wrong. It's all so similar though, like the names and like that. I'm pretty sure the voice actors and the cartoons were like pretty much the same. Like the guy so, who did Starscream, I think, did Cobra Commander and stuff. Like Was there a blind guy? I'm pretty sure there was a lot of crossover there. Oh, they were Hasbro. They were also Hasbro. So Transformers was also Hasbro. Holy shit. Oh man. But the uh, the, 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 the Cobra shit. team was Dr. Mindbender. And then oh, yeah. it just gets Destro. a bit shit. Range Viper. Alley Viper. There's a guy called Lampreys, a guy called Bat, Night Creeper, and Strato Viper. What was the guy? They had Destro, and then they had that dude. It was like Man at Arms or something. He had like metal arms and an eye patch. Uh, well, he was he, a bad He-Man guy. had a guy called Man at Arms, who was like his buddy, right? But I don't Maybe know. Maybe that's who I'm thinking of. Man but there was definitely, was definitely a, there was a G.I. Joe guy. He had like um he had like a like a cobra shaped helmet I guess like if that makes sense to you but he had an eye patch and a mustache yeah and then he had like two black metal arms um but I can't remember his name now he was he was you're just thinking of like a guy out of Mortal Kombat or whatever um, no all, all the GI Joe guys did sort of look like Mortal Kombat guys yeah like I think there was a lot of inspiration there. No, but, no, um, this was way before. Way there was before. a boxer. There was a GI Joe. There was a boxer guy in GI Joe as well. You had um, you had Snake Eyes, who was the blind ninja guy. Storm Shadow, who was the white ninja guy. Like his his costume was white. Cobra Commander, who was of course the blue Cobra guy. Destro, yeah. who was the guy with the metal head. I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he then, had the silver head. Yeah. yeah. Scarlet Duke, uh, Duke. Flint. Stalker, Flint, Hawk, yeah. Lady J, ah, Roadblock. You can't forget Roadblock. Roadblock. Yeah, Roadblock. And then they had um, Sewer what? sewer Rat or whatever. Remember that guy? Uh, tunnel Rat. Tunnel Rat, I think How so. He had a really going? huge backpack, but he was good at, he was good Dude, at crawling through sewers toys. and stuff. You know what? I, one of the figures I had when I was a kid was Shipwreck who was a sailor and he had a little parrot on his shoulder and the toy yes. came with a little parrot. That yeah, so yeah, I remember cool. that. I had the base. I had the offshore, um, like pl oil platform looking base. Oh, wow. It had like the the risers and stuff. That oh, that was pretty cool. It had like a helicopter landing pad. Shit, there's and, and the then door. God damn it! One year, oh, my uh, my grandma <laughs> bought me this huge helicopter. <laughs> Don't leave me with zips. He's just gone to get the door, and you're telling yeah. me about GI Joe. G.I. Joe completely well, missed it was, so, For sorry. you guys, it was Action Man, right? You guys had, like, the Barbie-sized Maybe um, the reason why I'm man. a puny, like, millennial, like, pussy is because I never had G.I. Joe. No, right? it's it probably never, right. So I never got given it. G.I. Joe's My parents were, maybe thought it was too violent or, like... The way know. that the toys were made, too, if you had a small screwdriver, like, um, you know, the ones that you use, like, um, to... Apologies. Like on on your computer, you know, when you build a computer, you have those small little precision scr screwdriver yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you had one of those handy, you could unscrew a GI Joe from their back and take them apart, mm. and they had like little elastics and stuff to like hold them in place. So you could like swap and change them around. So you could put like Tunnel Rat's pants on like Chuckles's body instead and stuff if you wanted to. But people who did that were like kind of weird, and you didn't Chuckles. really. You wanted them to, to just be pure. You didn't want to have like any weird pure sort of, out of the box Joe. None of this mussing. Right. No mussing. None of this. None of this messing around with the with the GI Joes. But yeah, we had um, we had tons of GI Joes when I was smaller, and we used to play with them out in it in our front yard, right? So yeah. we dig trenches oh, in the yeah. lawn. I got in trouble for it. And we'd have big wars with them and stuff. And it was really fun. God, it was great. Um and then every every week like every Sunday or whatever, everybody would be like super upset because one or two of them would be left in the yard by accident and then they'd get run over by the lawnmower yeah. and just like cut into a million pieces. So it just looked like a, it was like a horror show out there. There'd just be like little limbs and stuff laying all over the, 
all over the freshly cut grass, but then, you know, you just get some the more. The Cobra in lawnmower. Off you go. Merciless. <laughs> yeah. They came with like little weapons and everything yeah, too. Did. Fuck. They were such good toys. They, they were, were good. awesome. They were good. The weird thing yeah. about kids shows now compared to kids shows when I was, when I was a kid is that now the toys seem to come along. If the show is successful, there'll be some toys to go with it. But yeah. it does. It felt like like back then. It was literally an advert for toys. Like the He-Man show. When you watch it, they were like, "Oh, look, it's a new friend." And uh, you know, this guy is now available in stores. They didn't say it in the show, but they may as well yeah, have done. It was, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I yeah. mean, all of these things, all of these new characters they introduce, and all of these awful plots they come. It's all just to shift more toys. The thing is, yeah. as a kid. Yeah, it sucks that, that they advertise directly to kids like that, but I fucking loved it. And it's not like it was my money. All my parents had to do was say, no, we're not fucking buying you more G.I. Joe toys. You can uh, have a book. And that's up to the... <laughs> you know what I mean? The parents just have to say, no, you can't have yeah. the Cobra Island playset. You're going to have to have a book and a jump. Well, we up. had to wait for like Christmas yeah, exactly. for, for, for big stuff. Like we, I, like I, we barely got anything throughout the year except for like your birthday... Or Christmas. And then you'd get a couple of like, you know, big things to tide you over until the next birthday or Christmas yeah. sort of thing. And that was it. But and then as you got older, it was games instead, right? Yeah. Like I remember I used to get all of the um like the NES and the and the Super Nintendo Final Fantasy games. Like I'd always get one at Christmas somehow. How old how um, old were you even... when, when you stopped playing with toys? Because I can remember the occasion. Very well, distinctly. <laughs> I mean, the hold thing on a is, second. I never, hold on a second. I never fully stopped, though, right? Because I had a brother. That, well, I have a brother still, but he was six years younger. Right, so right. So as he was coming up, he was getting into like Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles, and he had all these toys. And I was kind of getting to the age where I was like, no, fuck, you know, toys. Like, I don't want, don't buy me any toys, but I'll, I'll gladly sit here and like play with them with my right, brother, right. sort of thing. Because they were still kind of cool. That's kind of sweet, actually, honestly. That's fucking, yeah. look, literally, I can imagine like you two like sitting there as, as like babies. I think it's like, I imagine people like this little bald baby and I imagine <laughs> sitting as this little balding baby, right? I can't help it. And you guys just sat there like on your ass, you know, with your legs out in front of you and you just look at the, you look at the G.I. Joe and you just said, ah, oh, I'm, I'm too old. So I'm, I'm done for this. <laughs> I'm done with this shit. <laughs> just yeah. like sadly, like miserably. Light up a cigarette. I think I'm done with toys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man! And your yeah, I, first birthday really disappointed. I thought it was for I cigarettes remember, and a bottle of I scotch. I remember it was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus! I remember it was around the time Ren and Stimpy came out. I think that's when I was like sort of getting out of toys. Right. It was it, Ren and Stimpy came out, and people would come over to my house after school. And we would God, watch Ren and Stimpy. That show was so good, man. That was yeah, so and good. It was, and, and people would fucking raid my cupboards and eat like all of our snacks and stuff. My mom would always get really mad. And that's when I knew that I was like transitioning into just like a fucking dope of a teenager right. instead of just being a kid who stayed home and played with toys or whatever. That That's like the, that's like the hallmark, isn't it? When random people start turning up at your house after school and hanging out there until like, you know, whenever somebody comes to pick them up or they'll get in trouble sort of thing. That's, that's, that's the transition period, isn't it? That's right. when you're just like no longer a kid. You're just like some asshole who's, you know, always in your parents' house and they're just like, they can't wait for you to move out sort of thing. Yeah, so, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I was, uh, I, I, I had uh, some best friends like when I was growing up. Um, one of them, uh, my friend William, who was absolutely my my best friend when I was growing up, and we were we were colossal nerds together, right? And he was he was a kind of an unusual character. I've always had friends who were kind of a bit weird, or maybe people didn't really get them, sort of thing. And it never bothered me that people had strange personal foibles. Uh, his his were multiple. Like for instance, if we were going into town together, uh, and I'd say, "Hey, let's take the bus." As I'm getting on the bus, he'd say, ah, "I'm going to walk." So I would ride nice. into town on the bus and meet him in town uh, after he'd walked in. And I'd be like, okay. And uh, we'd go to the shops or whatever. And he'd be like, ah, oh, I'm going to go home. And he'd just sort of go. But he wasn't that he was being unpleasant. He just had no social skills whatsoever. And uh, yeah. he, was kind of, he was kind of strange like that. But um, it never bothered me. Like we played all kinds of nerdy games, played all this loads of Spectrum games. We played board games for hours and hours and hours, like really complicated yeah. ones like Starfleet Battles and shit like that. That's like a fucking textbook of rules. Um, 
And I was at his house one time and he had loads of toy soldiers. I had loads of toy soldiers. And we used to play in his in his garden quite a lot with them because he his his mum had dug quite deep flower beds. And around the flower beds, it was like an obvious trench. And so you could yeah. set up your troops in that trench without having to dig. It was great. And the pond was like the main central field. You know, we'd have to battle around the pond and everything like that. I remember one time I went around there with my soldiers and out of nowhere, he just goes like, I don't want to play with toy soldiers anymore. I was like, oh, like I was crushed. I loved playing with the toy soldiers because I, and I've realized subsequently that that was me wanting to play like tabletop board gaming and miniatures and stuff like that. But I was still there with the soldiers, having a little bag of soldiers that I brought over and he was like, nah, I'm done. I was like, he just reaches his arm out of like, out of scene. And then, you know, he pulls back some like 14 year old girl. No, I'm he didn't have a girl. Stuff. That was the thing. If it had been a girl, it would have been like, no, nah, I'm into girls now. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, all right, that's cool. That's cooler than soldiers. He was just literally, he didn't want to do it. He just wanted to do something else. I was like, oh, okay. I was crushed. He puts his arm out of scene and pulls in a 14 year old boy. I'm done with soldiers now. <laughs> oh man. I think, I think oh, man. We, we were probably about 10 or 11. And yeah. uh, we, we, he, he's right. right. We, we, I was too old for toy soldiers, but it was subsequent to that. I got into like um, tabletop gaming and stuff, and he instantly did as well. Like we, we used to play like Warhammer Forty K and stuff like that. Yeah. But it was it, when I was eleven at school that some of the sixth formers were playing that game, and they were like, "Oh, do you want to play?" And I was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah!" Like they were really cool, and um, nice. It was great. Fucking love it. I wish I had the space for a massive. I always wanted to have like one of those massive tables. That people have, and you know, you see a picture of it on the internet. It's like taking over their whole basement. It's just a huge tabletop gaming thing. Yeah, yeah. With a <laughs> that comes like later in life, though, right? Like yeah. people, people become like massive enthusiasts about it or whatever. Like as as they're a bit older and they have more disposable yeah, income, and the then they build these massive nerd layers in their basement or whatever. Yeah, we it had, used to um, be a thing with train sets, right? It used to it used to always be the dad's sort of refuge in the basement where he put together his model train set. But yeah, now yeah. I guess that'll be replaced by you having a, you know, G.I. G. Joe battleground. <laughs> no, like well, a, no, it's just computer now. Like you just get a big computer with all your games on it. And then, well, that's me anyway. Just like sit out here in my dad garage and just fucking play. I, I remember whatever. playing tabletop board games and stuff with, with my friends. Just because I remember we had like a big dining table in my, in my dining room um, stroke living room <laughs> which i had in my because we lived in a sort of a big bungalow with a big bit weird sort of place anyway um it was um it was really nice to just sort of hang out there when it was like hot in summer with my friend and playing warhammer and we were both like pretty young you know we didn't really follow the rules or know the rules particularly but we argued over the rules mm. all the time we we, it, we we were just like yelling at the top of our voices at each other yeah. like, about about yeah. like arguing away and it, we had it was it was a wonderful time I loved it. Yeah. You liked arguing about Warhammer? Girl Sips, give us your dad basement dreams. Well, I'm in I'm in it right now. I'm living it right now. Like this is what I do sort of living thing. Living the dream. Which is pretty nice. But I remember with in come back to toys and, and getting out of toys or whatever. I remember get I remember getting out of lots of toys kind of around like eleven or twelve or whatever. And then we sort of all collectively decided that it was no longer cool to play with toys or whatever and we had to do other stuff but one thing that we still kept doing like really like for years afterwards up until we were like maybe even like 16 um we we still played with lego a lot like we'd make these huge huge bases out of lego um and then we'd make like a ball out of lego that we'd throw at each other's bases so you had like a huge base and you had to have like a power core that was like hidden somewhere so Jesus. if they knocked out your power core you were dead, wow. right? Um, and we, because we, all of us had tons of Lego. So we, like, at one point, I think we just combined all of our Lego together, just had like thousands and thousands of pieces of Lego. And we just sit there, like, it, it always happened if there was just like nothing going on, right? Like if, if nobody had money or we just like weren't doing something or whatever, we would just sit in our friend's basement and we just play fucking Lego forever it was crazy it was really fun too but it was amazing. like it was really hush wow. hush too like we couldn't go to school and be like yeah we played lego for like 30, <laughs> 30 hours this weekend sort of thing like we just it was it was just this thing where you'd see your friend on monday at school or whatever and you'd just give him that knowing look but like we oh never talked God, about like it again secret shame buried <laughs> yeah. under the ground yeah yeah, you yeah. Had like it a was really fucking fun everything. though it was awesome and that's where like we started a, a lot of this fucking weird 
you know, chit chatting when you're not really paying attention and you're just like, you know, making shit out of Lego or whatever and, and stuff. We would just do that for hours. You hung out with really all the mole men. They were into yeah, it. we were just the like, were down yeah, there, feeding the our girls and just playing Lego, Lego and stuff. Yeah, it was it was good times. Do you, do you ever wonder Man. if, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if kids still play games that way where they all just play like that kind of really inventive stuff, or if they just go around and play FIFA. And I think it is kind of a shame that, as much as I love games, I'd hate to think, like a lot of the games, are, I, I still remember them. They're really founding memories that I've made of, of the games that I played and the, thing, the toys that I play with. Like sometimes I go to my mum's house and she's still got all my old toys, bless her. So I kind of go and go to these boxes and pull out something I haven't seen for 30 years. And I instantly recognize it. And I remember the games I play with it and the things that we did. And I kind You've of. You've got to remember, P Flex, when we were kids, we were bored out of our fucking minds. We were. That's right? it. We, we were had shit. nothing on like... the telly, and there would be nothing on the telly, right? Because you'd have. It'd be like daytime, you would be able to. There was no Netflix, yeah. nothing to watch, no YouTube, no screens. You didn't have a mobile phone. You had no games. You had shit. You had literally fuck all. You had I, remember, I, re I remember literally playing outside for like 12 hours a day yeah. when I was small. Like it, it would it be in the summer, it would get dark at like 10 o'clock at night or whatever. And you would just be out like right until it got dark. And then your parents would be like, okay, everybody time to come in or whatever. But that's like all you did. Cause like Lewis said, it was just fucking nothing to do. Yeah. Like, we'd play, <laughs> yeah. we'd play you baseball in the street. Games because you got the, you know, you, you weren't allowed to get them or you only got them like once a once a one day a yeah. week if you rented it from the local video shop or whatever if you were lucky yeah. and then you know the rest of the time it was like yeah just fucking entertain yourself and so you just pretty much just kind of i mean i think we were times were different p flex got to remember that oh i Very know they different. were different what i'm saying is i want the people the young people of today to suffer as i did because otherwise how is that fair I, I don't it's think not, it's, yeah, it's not fair. They're just, they're just so fucking plugged in nowadays that, you know, I they think got our imagination everything. was a false symptom of mass boredom, though. It's a little bit like being put in solitary confinement in prison, right? Like yeah. your mind will start making shit up and creating all these amazing, like, worlds and stuff. You know, I remember you know what's, insane. what's amazing is when my kids say, how long until we go to so-and-so? And I'll say, oh, it's like a week. They go a week, and it seems to them like <laughs> like the longest time. And I I think you're right. Going back to the, the whole boredom thing, a lot of the time, I mean, they have to go to school, and I fucking hated going to school when you were sitting unless you're just sitting there, just waiting. And as I got older, I started to really like watch the clock and be thinking, oh my god, I just want to go home and play, or I just want to go yeah. out, or go on my bike, or be running around and doing something without people telling me to sit down and having to learn about volcanoes and stuff. And that you know all the the kind of stuff you got to do at school, we just got to plod through it. Uh, and it's literally so much that you want to do as a kid. You've got all the energy in the world. You, you, I mean, my kids just never stop. They'll say they're tired and then they'll see something they want to do. And then they'll do that for like four hours, just bounding around, leaping off stuff. And I think yeah. you said you were tired two seconds ago. What you meant was you're bored. You're just fucking bored to tears. How desperately sad. It, yeah. It's the way it is though. Like it's just the way that kids are. Like they just think that they have no they have no concept of like of time really. Yeah. Kids. You know, like we like we went we went on on vacation uh, last year. Um we we took my son to Disneyland. This is like months before we even left. I was like, "Hey, guess what? We're going to go to Disneyland." He's like, "Now?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> like, "We're not going fucking now. Like <laughs> it's going to happen in like 6 months, but we're going." And he's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> like you know, he just like he has no it, it, yeah. unless it's like literally splashing him in the face at that second he's just not interested like it's just yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious but yeah. it's really realistic i guess it's really living in the moment it's a good way to live really it's kind of you think so you know, yeah it's like because if, you know, if it was up to my kids they'd have the same thing for dinner pretty much every night and they'd have ice cream. a huge it would dessert. be literally ice cream yeah, it would for be dinner. ice cream every night and then what would yeah. you what do you want to do today just play all day if the world was run like that lewis Nothing would ever get done if we didn't plan no, That's ahead. how Greece and Italy work, right? Hey, politics. <laughs> it's Jesus. a politics joke. Gosh. <laughs> oh my god. If you're if you're from Greece or from Italy, um, I just want you to know that I don't share the same opinions about you as Lewis. 
Um, so don't, yeah. If I see you in like an alley or something, or like a back alley, <laughs> is that where like you think tap, Greek and Italian people hang or out? Something? They all hang out in an alley. <laughs> yeah, pretty hey, much. Senor. <laughs> hey, senor. <laughs> yeah, something well, like that, that anyway. Yeah, that's obviously not Greek or Italian. <laughs> no disrespect, men. No, no disrespect, men. Okay, that's all I'm saying. But um, yeah, I remember yeah. when we were when we were kids. I remember a big problem for us when we were kids because we had to play outside a lot. Um, was the streetlights weren't bright enough to be able to catch a baseball yeah. or a football when it was thrown at you. So it was like it, it it got to be a bit of a problem. Like you know, sort of as as the sun was setting, <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it's like, hey, hang on, you know, the, this guy got a home run, but actually it <laughs> wouldn't have really been a home run three hours ago when the sun was out and I could actually see what the fuck was going on, sort of thing. And that led to like a lot of arguments and stuff too. What fun. you try and bring in a a rule that says like, day, like as the light goes down, the distance you have well, to hit the ball. It was like a technicality, <laughs> right? Like, you know, this this guy who never hits home runs would just like you know hit his first home run, and it was because of that. And then everybody would be sitting in the back grumbling away, like, "No, oh, fuck this guy, <laughs> fucking that's not a real home run." <laughs> 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 that's, you know, know what, that's the weird thing kids kids fucking love making up rules like they love yeah. everything has to be really quite strict i find when they play like i, I you know when my daughters are playing games the rules are so fucking overbearing at times i'm like jesus christ girls give it a break with the rules like you know allowed to touch this and then this is my one and then you have to come around the side and then you got to do this and you can only have two of these and four of these and we got to split them up even then you can't come over my side and here's my boundaries like shut the fuck up and play <laughs> my son does this thing where he's like all right uh we're gonna be characters from this show i'm gonna be like the main character like he'll he'll, he'll always pick the main character or he'll he'll pick the bad guy, like the main bad guy, like for, for whatever reason, those, those, those are like his go-tos. And then he gives me the option. He's like, what character would you like to be? And then I'll, I'll be like, oh, uh, I just want to be, you know, some fucking obscure nerd that like, you know, nobody cares about or something. Chuckles. You know, I'll be Chuckles. He's like, no, dad, no, you can't be Chuckles. You have to be like the right hand man or, or you know, somebody that he, he can like, you know, sort of like control like the game with right. sort of thing. <laughs> like, And every time he asks me, I always try to pick like the most obscure asshole character like just to see what his reaction will be it's really funny it's this kind oh, of man. moment of confusion is it where he tries to figure out who that is and yeah he sort of says no no he can't be because uh, he i don't think he half knows who that is yeah or he's trying to remember it in his head yeah uh, or you've just it's, made it up it's really really good uh it's, it, it's funny it's funny like like playing like games like that with kids and stuff because their reactions are so genuine they're like so funny too because they don't have a filter right yeah like, they're just like whatever they're thinking it'll just come out sort of thing so it's like it, yeah it's it's really excellent god oh my goodness so let's move on to what games you guys have been playing this week what have you guys been playing that's good um, oh man i picked up fallout 4 again i started playing it i i created a new character and i started from the start because i thought Last time I played it, I played it for like 50 hours. I didn't do any quests. I just went around. I dicked around and stuff. So this time I thought, you know what? I'm going to do the main quest line, follow it through. And I'm like getting through it. And I've been enjoying it, actually. Like the main quest is pretty cool. Like I like the whole thing with like the Institute and everything and just finding out what's going on. I haven't like read anything about it. So I don't, there's not that many spoilers out there for me about it or whatever. So I'm enjoying it. And um there's a whole bunch of new DLC for it too. Like you can make like these factories now in your settlements, wow. like contraptions, like automate, like conveyor belts and stuff. Jeez. So I'm going to check that out. And there's some other shit. And there's a couple of like sort of quest based DLCs. And then I think next month there's a DLC coming out where you can manage your own vault. So like you get, I guess you get a vault and then you can like recruit people to live in it and you can build them exercise machines and shit like that. Mm. So that looks pretty fun too. Exercise machine. I like all that kind of shit. So yeah, I've been playing that and um, Overwatch competitive play came out, I guess like yesterday have or the you, day have before. Have you played the competitive stuff? Yeah, yeah. I did all my placement oh, matches wow. and I, I'm rank or rating 51. Wow. So yeah, Congrats. I'm the best. Thanks, What does man. that mean? I don't, it's, it's on a scale of one to a hundred. So not really bad. average, I Slap guess. Slap bang in the middle. No, I, yeah. gu I guarantee Super. you that's not average. Like if you think about Dota, you, you'd think that like, for instance, there are some players who are 9k MMR. 
So you'd think that being four and a half thousand to five thousand MMR would be like the, the average, but it's not. It's always like a pyramid. Like most people that play these games fucking suck. And genuinely, when oh. you play with them, you realize. I mean, I would normally put myself in that camp. So, right, like, but I, don't I, think I, I'm I bet good. you're not. Like a, lo a lot of people play games and are so so bad at them. They, yeah, and they, they put thousands of hours in, but they're they're even worse than us, which is amazing yeah. to me. But it does um, happen. So I wouldn't. I don't think fifty-one is too cool, bad. cool though. Like it, it changes the rules of some of the maps and stuff. So like, oh, yeah. um, you know, like the you know the capture point like leading into payload maps sort of thing. Um, like in the first round, let's say you're defending, yeah. right? And or oh no, say so let's say you're attacking, okay? And you you the other team defends so well that you can't even capture the first point right, at all, right, right? Right. All you have to do um, when you're defending is 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 make sure that 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 happens as well. But for the attacker, all they need to do to win the whole game is capture that first point because oh, wow. you were unable to capture I it like yourself. Because I was thinking it's yeah. it's fucking stupid when. There's no benefit to me, like you. You need like four overtimes to capture the 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 point or whatever. Like that, it needs to be. It's like saying, well, we I won four nil in the first leg, and you won one nil in the second leg. So it, it's a yeah. tie. It's like no, it's not yeah. a tie. I should be winning by four to one. Like you know, I, yeah, that's good. I'm glad they brought that in. It's pretty cool. And then they've introduced this new, almost like in-game currency now. Um, like every time you play a competitive game or win a competitive game, you get a competitive point, huh. which you can save up a ton of and um, buy like cosmetic shit with. So like Soldier 76 has like a, it costs like 300 competitive points, but it's like a golden gun oh, sick. sort of thing. He, he's well, he can, is my favorite hero. I love Soldier He's pretty cool, yeah. I like him. So that, just shit like that, but it's it's definitely sort of heading in the right direction. It's it's interesting anyway. It's pretty fun. So I've been playing that a bit and then Prison Architect as well. Still playing that. It's fun. Enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I booted that up. I played a little bit of Prison Architect. I think it's um, it's good, isn't it? It's, it's a lot... I, I mean, when you compare it to RimWorld, it feels like RimWorld is... Because is, I, I play RimWorld first. Right. Prison Architect feels like a, such a slick, much more polished, well-done version of the engine. Playing RimWorld, it's kind of a bit tough, rough around the edges. It is a bit, a yeah. Kind of, a little, little bit. A little bit janky. It's, you, can, you can tell RimWorld is still uh, like a very... Well, it's pretty polished, you know, all things considered, but it is still a work in progress. Yeah, you can yeah. tell that they're still yeah, going to add a just, lot of yeah, stuff to it. Yeah, the polish is like just a hundred times better on Prison Artec. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I picked, because it's a Steam Summer Sale on, and I picked up a bunch of things to try them out, and I ended up refunding like three or four things because um, they didn't sort of work properly. First of all, I bought Watch Dogs, so I'd never played that, and I wanted to play it, and then I couldn't fucking just, I couldn't get it to run. So I was like, what, fuck the this new Watch Dogs? Watch Dogs 2? Yeah. No, not the new Watch Dogs. I don't think oh, the new right. Watch Dogs is out yet. Is I it? don't even know when it's coming out. No, like, I don't think it's out. But I think it's out fairly soon. I wanted to well, I wanted to play the first one before I... So I might have to rebuy it and try it again. But God, I don't, I'm annoyed about that. And then I bought like a series of kind of um, RPG type. I just fancied like a dungeon crawly roguelike mm. RPG sort of experience for, for, yeah. for a change. And so I bought a couple of them on Steam and on the Steam sale. And I, oh God, I couldn't... I, I either couldn't get into them or... They were a little bit too grindy, but so, but you know, I, I I I'm I'm happy. I spent a weekend like trying out a bunch of different games, and you know, I had I had a good time about it. So, yeah, I feel um, like um I feel like recently I've been playing games a lot more naturally because like you tend to sort of not do that when you record for YouTube and stuff. Sometimes you're like playing games that you might not necessarily be playing a lot of in your spare time or right, whatever. Right. But I feel like. I've got a couple of games now that I'm playing regularly and looking forward to picking back up and playing sort of thing. And I think like having two or three games that you, you sort of like, you know, jump around, you need like one really grindy game. That's like sort of like your overarching game sort of thing. Yeah. So like for me right now, that's like Overwatch, something that, you know, the progression is very slow and you just sort of like gather these e points or whatever as as you play and it's like pretty fun bursty fun or whatever and then like fallout and prison architect are my more like long brewing games where there's like a story developing and stuff like that so it's like yeah i like those as well i like to just like chop and change in between them and then when i'm done with one of them i'm sure something else will just replace them but it's a nice Simon, place to be in um 
Simon came in this week and was chatting to me after we recorded Whale Lords about how basically he still plays WoW a lot. Yeah. Um, do you play? Do you, you you ever play WoW, P Flex? No, but um, every time I play Hearth, um, Hearthstone or any anything involving Battle.net, I log in and and Simon is in World of Warcraft like all the time. And everyone like wow. everyone on my stream goes, "Holy shit, Simon still plays WoW!" Like WoW, like yes. he plays it a lot. Judging from he does his Battle.net stuff, so he sits there. Um, Pilts around, levels up alts, does quests. He likes the world. He likes chatting to people in guild chat. He likes doing the fishing. That's kind of just his like casual thing, yeah. thing yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I think he gets a lot of joy out of it. I, I feel, I feel like I've managed to shake that bad habit. So I, 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 did, I never thought WoW was like a hugely positive experience on my, in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've got to thank it in a way for you know the way it sort of allowed me to meet up with you guys and stuff. So I mean, I, I, I can't, can't. I do, I do, I do feel like I owe WoW, but at the same time, I feel like I'm glad to not be a crack addict anymore. Right. Yeah. In a way. Because wow, it's a tricky wasn't. one. I never know what to do when I get back into it. It's a, a it's such a huge game. Yeah, it's so, so overwhelming. Much. I like I, I log into my my whatever my character was that I last played, open up their bags, they're full, and I'm like, oh fuck, I don't like it's too much. I just have to log out. <laughs> yeah, I just I'm don't sure know what, what to do. It's just like the, there's the no minor, the organization. I'm not like yeah. in the flow with it whatsoever, sort of thing. So like uh, more more often than not, like if I come back to play WoW, I usually just level the character from scratch again, just to sort of get back into it yeah. or whatever. It's but hard then, to to dip in and out of a game if you if it's that big. Like yeah. like I I play I mean I play a lot of games like um like for instance if I'm playing a game of Civ Five say I I very rarely go back and load a game even the next day unless it's like a been an amazing game I very rarely finish them I'll play it up to a point and I'll be like okay, oh, I'm done with this now. I played Civ for five hours and I'll stop. And then yeah. I'll never come back and load that up like a week later, ever. It's, no. just, it's like while the experience is going on and you're doing it day to day, it feels like it's fresh in my mind. But the moment I step away, I have no idea what's going on. It's gone. It's yeah. like, and that kind of makes me realize that a lot of the time when I'm playing games, it's just stuff that's happening and I'm re responding to it, but there's not really anything being embedded in my head Whereas when I play, like, for instance, when I play a, a multiplayer game, because I'm playing it with other people, the experience embeds itself in my head more because it's like a shared one. And because we're talking and I remember the conversations and stuff like that. So like when I yeah. play Dota, there are lots of games of Dota that I still remember really well or plays that, that happen in the game. Whereas with World of Warcraft, I don't really remember much other than I, I seem to remember things like the music I was listening to while I was playing. Like there were certain albums I was listening to at the time. And every time I hear a song or I hear that album, I'll think, oh shit, I remember I was uh, playing World of Warcraft uh, when I heard this for the first time. It's like that. Yeah. That kind it's of like a memory trick. Yeah. yeah. That, it's like that a certain kind of stuff. smell that does stuff. To, yeah. There's, there are certain elements in life that do that. Like the trick that jog your memory from a yeah. specific time and place, you know, when you were doing yeah. something. Yeah. But, but the yeah. game wow, it's itself, just such a, it's just so big. There's so much to it. It is. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a lifestyle game, though, isn't it? It's like, it's, it's, for a lot of people, it's probably the only game that they play. Yeah. And, you know, some people might only play it for an hour a day, and some people might play it for 24 hours a day or whatever. But, like, it's, it, it's so big, and it, when you leave it and you try to come back to it, it's, it's really impossible. I guess that's why expansions are quite good, though, because you... You're, you're sort of forced to restart because yeah, there's all yeah. this new content. You have to go through it. You have to do all this stuff. And then if you're still really into the game or you want to keep playing, you know, you're, you're, you're just there sort of thing. And it and it's fine. I'm going to play Legion when it comes out. I'm actually looking forward to it. I don't know how long I'm going to play it for, but um, it's, you know, it's, it's weird that a game could be so old and, uh, you know, been around for such a, a long time and I'm still fairly excited to play it from time to time sort of thing yeah. like i always somehow gravitate back towards it even if it's just for two or three weeks or whatever like there's definitely things about it that i miss that like i don't think i'll ever come back you know like having a big guild sort of thing and a really like active guild chat and you know raiding regularly with with people and stuff like i don't think i'd, I'd ever i don't know i don't know if the game is like that so much anymore i guess it is for some people but I don't know if it is for us. Like, We've changed. The game's changed. Like it is, it is different. The way we experience and enjoy games is different. I think too. Like yeah. you know, I, I I don't know. I have some really good memories in WoW. You know, because obviously everyone everyone has good memories of like playing games as a kid. You know, I remember I used to work summer holidays in an off license, um, 
and I would get to like take home. It, basically, guys, this is this to all the listeners out there. If you are interested in something, okay, get a job doing that, and you'll end up with free that, right? So I, when I worked in an off license, I got a lot of free booze, okay, because yeah. it went out a day or whatever it was getting chucked away. I was like, oh, I'll take it. So I ended up taking like a crate of archers um home because it was all going out of date and i literally spent like a whole summer just in the heat you know basically my pants playing wow with the window open like but beautiful sunny day out there but i'm playing wow with drinking just drinking archers (laughs) every night till i got fucking wasted wake up the next day you know going to work sunny day come home play wow and drink archers it was it was a wonderful happy time of my life just a syrupy peachy sugary wow fla- wow flavored mess man nice. i don't know how i climbed out of that hole mm. but i did eventually i mean there were some wonderful fucking times playing video games yeah. i remember like from my past uh, yeah well, it's a really good experience i think it was eve online was the time that i enjoyed a, a sort of mmo the most like i did enjoy wow but i def- definitely wasn't in a guild that i liked like they were just convenient because they were about the same level as i was and they were raiding the same things as i was like I didn't, I was, uh, I can't even remember what they were called. They were mainly Danish guys and they were nice enough, but they took it quite seriously, even though they weren't very good at it. And they weren't much sort of fun. Do you know what I mean? They weren't like, there was very little social chatting and stuff. It was just, we kind of methodically helped each other with quests and it was kind of functional. Business. Yeah, it was quite businessy. So I didn't yeah. get much of a social side from it. Whereas when I played Eve for like four years, it was entirely just a social thing and we just had a laugh like we'd go on these ops where we'd fly around and we'd all get drunk and one time we did a musical op where we flew around and one guy was playing the trombone one guy was playing the guitar and i was singing and we did st- uh, stairway to heaven whilst we were flying into battle right we were doing like this little over the internet uh weird acoustic trombone version of stairway to heaven <laughs> it was the weirdest nice. thing but it was so cool like i remember thinking how funny it was um and that that was great. Like that was honestly that side of it has always been more fun to me than the MMO grind. Like I don't want to just sit on my own, but I did when I played WoW. I'd sit there on my own and do it. And I remember thinking, man, this is fucking boring. But I was kind of just zoned out doing it. It was just like a thing you did. Have to sit. Yeah, like it did. was weird though. It was just kind of chill, wasn't it? Yeah. You just like have a movie on or just have some music on or whatever, and you just do this really repetitive thing over and over and over. Yeah sort of half pay attention to what was going on but you kind of knew that like when you were done grinding like that you would you know it would open up the game so that you could do other stuff like yeah. you know I, I i would level up and, and grind through it and stuff like that knowing that you know oh it'd be cool to get into a raid group do some raids and and do that kind of stuff or you know maybe do some pvp or, or something like that and it was always like it always led up to something and always took a little while but it was it was all right like yeah. i didn't mind it so much but i, I feel like uh, with, I don't the, know. with the raiding once we started because i i did the same thing like i ground up to level 60 and it took forever because i fucked it up and i went back and did it with a different character and it was all it was fine and you know you go and get this bit of gear and you'd be like oh i need to get this so i can do that and it was like fine and you'd get your guildmates to help you out like i'm sure there was a quest for mages where you had to do one instance to get something i can't even remember what it was it was like so either something to change your hex to from from a sheep to a turtle or something i can't even remember it honestly and i'm sure that oh, yeah, there yeah. was there was just a few things that you do just to sort of you know a minor things for your character and that was fine but then once we started doing the raiding and you realized that with 40 people and not enough loot for 40 people, you were going to be coming back and doing this exact same instance constantly. Like, con- yeah. and it was hours, and it was no fun because it was so stressful and tense because we were rubbish. So we wiped constantly. And I just, I was just, at that point, I realized that everything I'd been grinding for was actually not much fun. And all right, it opened it up for me, but holy shit, I, yeah. I, I quit. Once, once we did Molten Core a few times and I, ne- I didn't get anything. And I realized how much time I had to dedicate to it. I was like, fuck me, this is... And there's always someone who has to leave. One of the healers like, oh, go, go. Oh, no, and yeah. Like, oh, and it was f- such a chore for people too, yeah. right? Like after you'd run it a couple of times and everybody knew the fights and stuff, it was, everybody was there. They were just like, well, fuck, we've got to do this again. Like, yeah. I've got to put myself through this seven hours of Molten Core again. And the guild, I'm not going to get anything. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a funny, funny mentality, but like, I don't know. We were, you were younger then too right like i didn't at the time like i played wow i paid a subscription and everything and 
you know, I wasn't buying games like every day or yeah, anything yeah. back then. It was just like, okay, I'm going to play this. And then when I'm really sick of it, I'll buy something else sort of thing. But like, it's a bit different now. Yeah, I'm just like, is. well, I get games given to me for free a lot now too. So like, I don't appreciate them as much. Like I'll, yeah, I'll play a game that I haven't paid for and I'll be like, eh, whatever. <laughs> like I don't even care about it sort of thing. I like, think you don't value stuff when it's for free though. I think that nah. that was the thing that we had when we were younger, right? If you paid 50 quid for a game or whatever, even if it was a shit game, you would fucking work to get, yeah, to extract you're every get last quid from out of that. that. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the reason I kind of like games where it's the same game, but it's like a random start, like each time. So every time you restart, you don't feel like you've gone back to square one. You feel like this is just the game. This is what it is. Like uh, there are lots of games I return to like that. Um, game game yeah. Dev Tycoon is one that for some reason I always come back to. I love really? that. Yeah, I love that game. I don't know why I find it very relaxing. Oh, it feels so. Repetitive. I've done it as well. I I've it played it so many times and come back to it and started really? yeah. it so many times. Yeah. I just it's, really love it's it. It's something really weird about it, yeah. I love the little balls going blah, 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 yeah. like that. It's just yeah. it's just satisfying to me. Where so, I like so something how in like one uh, of Sorry, go on, mate. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say something like like football manager is the same thing. I come back and I'll manage a different team and it'll be the same, you know, starts in 2015, it's the same thing, but but so much different stuff happens because of the nature of the game. Uh it's sort of it's different every time. I like that. I, I like the same with Civ. You know, different start, different. The game's going to play out completely differently. That's one of the, the downsides I think to Hearts of Iron, which is a game I know we're all playing a lot, is that there is no random map start. And I think until the mods and stuff and the DLC comes in, like we were talking about having a version where nobody's in a faction and nobody's allied, and there's no, you know, you'd literally build up diplomacy rather than be like a fixed. Uh, okay, Japan always goes to war with Russia, or Japan and America can never be friends. You know, you could have a version where everybody's just chill at the start, and maybe yeah. start in 1930 or whatever, and then you build up your own politics and see what the AI does. Like, maybe Japan and Russia become best buddies and go and conquer America, you know, that kind of thing. I, I would like yeah. to see that, rather than the fixed, just, you know, can you change history again? It's like... I don't know. I like the fix, though. There's lots of, you know, there's lots of things... That you can do with it though you know like there's there's lots of countries that you can you can turn into something out of nothing yeah and 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 really change the course of the war like no matter where you are like i, I feel like there is a limit to it but it would take you a while to to reach oh, that yeah, limit yeah. sort no, of thing i'm just thinking like, like, I don't like think longer term it would be fun to have some other game yeah. myself because i do find myself coming back to games like with uh, RimWorld, for instance where you don't know yeah. what's going to happen. There's lots of random events and stuff. Or well, prison architect, yeah, you yeah. can build a different prison. You'll have different prisoners and different problems every time. Whereas I feel like well, and prison architect, you can try different things too. Yeah, exactly. You know, like you can really, you can, you can, you could almost make like a factory if you really wanted to. Right, you know, right. like where they could come out r directly into like a shower thing and you know, not even give them a way to leave the prison <laughs> ever, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, like there's all sorts of different shit that you can try in that game, and it sort of caters very well to that, like you know, um, inventiveness, yeah, I guess. No. It's, I mean, it's really that's cool. That's the thing about WoW is if you want to level a character, there, there is pretty much an optimal way to do everything in that game. Like the, it's more about, I think the reason people love the new content is because it isn't locked in that this is what you do and this is the order you do it in and this is the best thing for this and this is the best thing for that. And I, I kind of, uh, I think with WoW, a lot of people are attracted to it because it's fixed and you know what you have to do and they just like... It's like people that like doing puzzles or coloring in books, you know, it's like, you know what you have to do. It's all laid out before you. You just got to complete the task. And some people really take yeah. a lot of satisfaction from that. Whereas I, I like I the feel... randomness like uh, of stuff like RimWorld and stuff like that, where you have to conquer a different, very changing set of circumstances as, as the game goes on. Yeah, it's that it, it's it's definitely different and, and, and cool, too. Um, Pyrian's comments about the faction thing in um, in Hearts of Iron 4 is, is off the back of the fact that we've recorded um a, a sort of game me Pyrian, and lewis of hearts of iron 4 which went okay <laughs> so i guess you'll see <laughs> it'll be on team double dragon soonish yeah, i guess yeah. um the whole thing is done now um and we're planning on doing another one which we might start tomorrow i'm not sure we'll have to see yeah but um it was fun i enjoyed it anyway i think i think you guys enjoyed it too um, it was a blast. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's a fun game. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely fun multiplayer, too. Yeah. I didn't think it would be I, I, so yeah, much fun. Same here. I didn't think it would be as good, but it, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was re really fun. 
Um, what was that? I wanted to say something else as well about, well, oh yeah, about WoW. Sorry, just um, before I forget. Um, the funny thing about WoW and the funny thing about the expansion model, like every time an expansion comes around, I think a lot of the hype uh, for people who have played the game, um, you know, since the start or have played it for a very long time and have been around for a couple of expansions at least, I think there's always that hope that you're going to get things back that you've lost along the way in terms of wow right yeah. it's a fresh expansion everybody is going to get into it everybody is going to hopefully really enjoy it and stick around and then you're going to get your big guild back with regular this and that and do fun shit or whatever and it never really does it never works out but maybe legion will be the one <laughs> maybe <laughs> legion will be the one to bring them all back who knows i don't know it's good it's a good to have like a, a i always enjoy these moments when we all pitch in when everyone gets involved and it's like oh hey everyone's playing this game and like you know you just you bump into fucking xylus out there or you know you say in guild chat hey does anyone want to do this and it's like you know you just get together a bunch of random people like you know like some random people from the office are playing and one of hat films or you know someone you know from somewhere you know some someone you went to school with and suddenly you're in a little group and you're chatting away it's i don't don't know it's like one of those it's one of these really it's really nice when everyone's playing the same game and we get together and and have like these it's it's like kind of everyone's excited everyone's into it everyone's exploring this new world together and sharing it and, and not necessarily competing with each other but i think that's always been an element of wow it's always been an element of you know you put the time in you put the effort in and then you can show off to people you know other that's people it. especially yeah. when they used to have all that shit like i remember doing like the paladin uh epic mount quest which was like a real ball ache back in the day because it cost like a lot of gold which was not as abundant as it is nowadays and stuff no, and had to remember like, they had the know, hunter really one as well to, yeah. where you had to do those like stupid kiting it was a it was a, a lot of these were a real fiddle and yeah. they took you you know you needed a couple of mates to take out their time to do it with you or, yeah you, yeah, know, yeah. you needed to like have a lot of resources which weren't easy to get you know you, like it wasn't as as easy as you know back in the day before you could just literally buy gold in the game which you can now because you just buy a token or whatever and sell it for like 90,000 gold or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually buy gold in the game legit. You know, before gold You can pay for your before, subscription with it now too. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, you can play the game and pay for... You can basically make the game free to play if you... Um, if you play, play it, enough. it enough kind yeah. of thing, which is, is a nice mechanic in a way, but... Yeah. Mm, I, I don't know. I mean, it's the, it's the Eve Isk mechanic as well, isn't it? That you can pay for your subscription with kind of enough... Is it enough Isk or ISK? Currency. I always just said uh, ISK. I think everyone says Isk. Pretty much, but I can't remember. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, feel, I feel that it's it's the pa- the social passion is what's exciting for me. You know, I think that's why people like it. And I think that, you know, when people do start dropping off that radar, it's like, well, who am I going to play with now? I think I think that's why some other MMOs don't hold the same allure, right? It's because none of your friends are playing. Yeah, them. yeah. If you got a bunch of you together saying, "Hey, we're going to all play this MMO now," um, you know, there's going to be a bunch of us doing it. Then. And and everyone sort of felt like other people were playing it. Yeah, it, it, it's a little bit like Rust. You know, everyone got on board that bandwagon, and then it sort of slowly faded out. And you know, into a couple of people still doing it, but nothing anywhere near what it was before. No, you know, that's that, it. Everybody was into it like apex. solid for like a week or two. And, and I then... think our attention span is is short. Yeah, um, but uh, that's due to due to us just getting older, I think, and, and having more variety, though. You know. I, I love, I really, I haven't got anything bad to say about it, really. I'm, I'm, it's, it's good. I, look, I'd rather have new expansions than not. I don't think there's a way to return to the old days. And honestly, if we get a bit of, if we get a week of cool social activity and like fun and, you know, memorable times yeah. out of it, then fucking cool. You yeah. know, well, I'll remember though from Drenor that what happened was you basically were so salty that you couldn't play on the EU servers, you were so mad that you fucking literally made an account on the US servers yeah. and played played there <laughs> instead. Yeah. Well, so I could actually were, log in and play, so it made so sense So we couldn't at the time. play together, which was no. like super annoying. Um, yeah. But you didn't really care, did you? But we and we gave up about the same time as well. I think. Well, yeah, like, we you, played for about two enough. weeks, didn't we? We just like yeah. sort of got got to max level, did a couple of dungeons or whatever, and then Draenor was exciting and and fun at the time but i don't know i think as far as expansions go i don't think it's going to be remembered as a great one there is something weird about like that that new thing right where everyone's exploring something for the first time and you're like the first there and it's almost like not exactly a race but everyone wants to play on launch day it's funny how the, the, the something being new has such a shiny 
sort of attachment to it that makes it somehow everyone sort of thinks it's somehow going to be really way better. I think you can go back to old games like Skyrim or Fallout 4 for the first time or whatever, and they're fucking incredible games, or even older games like, you know, Banjo-Kazooie or, you know, Ocarina of Time. You can go back to really old games and and they're still super fucking good today. Banjo-Kazooie? Um, yeah, I don't, don't even think I ever played Banjo-Kazooie, to be honest. Man, what a great game. Eh. I don't, think, I don't think I'd game. play that now. You wouldn't play that today. No, no. I, I, I Man, honestly, what was it? Was that originally a PlayStation game? I think so. Yeah, I, d- uh, I remember I know, playing I, I, it at I, the time. I but... mean, these games are super old. Like they're like twenty years old, literally. Um, yeah, those games. And PlayStation I'm just saying, was well, weird. I guess one, what I'm like... trying to say is that we are we are we are often blinded by the allure of newness um, in our culture. That everyone yeah. thinks that because something is new, it will be some for some reason better or and and sometimes you know that's not necessarily the case no um, i guess not wow what a boring chat no it's not Sorry. it's not boring at all uh, i'm just I'm man not, this is I'm like the segment of the podcast where we like we we, we get serious about games because we games are a huge part of what we what we do and how we what we our lives yeah. and they have been forever and also we know and that most of the people watching this play games like uh so i i don't don't think it's uh i mean i think sometimes maybe we don't joke around about uh, games as much i don't know why because we all do when we're playing them but when we're talking Uh about them i think it's actually something we know quite a lot about like all of us have played a shitload of games been playing games for years have seen how they changed have you know we've we've been a part of a lot of scenes and stuff with you know yeah so i think it's actually something we know stuff about and I, i well here's the thing Right. I think that you can have a lot of fun doing anything with friends, right? If you know, if you if you've just got a bunch of you around, and you've got a even like a fucking shit game like Monopoly, you know, it can still be a good laugh if you've got the right people around the table. Um, I guess what I, what I we we play games for a living, and and that's kind of a weird thing. But one of the one of the things that I've been doing lately, very much, is playing the games that I really enjoy. You know, like you said, playing Hearts of Iron, playing Civ, playing certain sort of crappy walking simulators with Duncan, playing like these Minecraft mod packs. I've been playing a lot of the games that I enjoy. What I haven't been doing really is the other sort of, some of the other things that I, I would like to do. So I'd like to, I'd like to sort of, I'd like to play some Warhammer or, or not Warhammer so much, but I'd like, I think one of the things we've looked at is the Judge Dread miniatures game. Oh yeah. And so it's like a kind of gang based thing. You recruit like some ape men or some fatties or whatever. You make a little gang and you kind of, fight with other people's gangs you know you have to paint your models and stuff i want to find a way to to make videos out of that yeah um which i'm really not sure how to do but i really want to do it i want to do another D D campaign oh i I'd think love that, to that's do that. really fun i love i love that and if you want to be in it i'd love to have you well in that. Where, yeah, where, where would, fun, would it have to be something that you did live yeah it's like in bristol yeah we'd have to do it we'd have to do it in person that's the difficulty okay. i mean if i and, came down like in the summer um yeah. the summer my kids are away for two weeks and there's well, a sweet... whenever you're thinking of going down, let me know. And yeah, we I'll could go do down it. That would be and awesome. Because they're, they're away for like okay. two weeks in the summer. And the only thing is the weekend, I need to be back in Bournemouth for just for that one night. And then I'm, I've am i got another week free. So I could even just come down for a bit. We could record a shitload of stuff, like do a D&D campaign and do all kinds of stuff. And then so like I could be down for a whole week and do it. I'd fucking yeah, love that. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd really enjoy doing something like that. I think that the, the, we, it has to be something that you're interested in, though, right? Because I think that with the D&D campaign, I think it has to be... You have to give a shit about, like... Are you saying like, I, I, that I'm someone who fails to give a shit a lot of the time? No, the last one we did was was the zombie one, right? And yeah, then I'm not I think the next one we should do should be a post nuclear apocalypse, like kind of like a fallout sort of thing, you know, coming out of a vault and then, you know, just like having an adventure in a wasteland leading up to something. That'd be awesome. Here's the thing with D&D, right? I think it's a little bit like a superhero movie, if you're not careful, where you can't die. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it's it would ruin it it's like you, you know you can't watch a batman film ex- anywhere expect oh is, is batman gonna die in this bit is, <laughs> is, is he gonna is superman gonna die in this bit you know that there's another film that he can't die that he's gonna win that he's gonna save the day and it's so predictable that i can't stand it. unless you're seven years old i can't get much pleasure out of of watching these things and these stories because i read i read so many books i read so much better story that when it comes to these 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 films or shows where it's 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 I, I'm not invested at all. I'm like, well, 
uh, you know, so what? He got out of it in an interesting way, but, you know, I knew he was going to get out right. of it somehow. So, you know, it's not, I'm not fucking watching this like t- as a detective novel. How, how does he get out of this one? I'm watching it as a, I don't know, I have a problem. And so with D&D, I have the same problem, okay? In that I have a problem where these people do these long campaigns where their characters almost are invulnerable. Um, and I have, I have that because the GM, one of the GM's jobs is to like, you know, balance it. So it's challenging right, for them. Right. So they feel like, they feel like they could die. They're never actually going to. And I, I know that it's supposed to happen, but I don't like the D&D system a lot. Like, I've got a lot of problems with the D&D system. I have a problem with combat. It's really long. It's too dice rolly. People don't know what they're doing. I think that when you get a group together, okay, who know what they're doing, it makes a really good video. The Civ is a good example of this, okay? Because we all play Civ 5 together. And nowadays, we, don't, we all kind of know what we're doing. And as a result, it's quite an enjoyable experience for everyone, right? I think that if we were playing Civ 5 for the first time or whenever we just play a brand new game that we're all still learning right. it suffers a bit from that and i yeah. think the problem with D is that when we do D and yogs quest sometimes if people we have to keep the rules fairly simple because otherwise every time we do something it's like uh can i do this yeah okay i'm gonna do this okay well you need to roll a dex to roll okay what's that well look at your character sheet okay what's what's my dex 16 okay what does that mean <laughs> you need you to roll a d20 with minus four right d20 i mean with that minus pretty four. much okay, in a I nutshell a is our Jumping. whole thing period it's, so it's incredibly much of a ball like okay whereas what you need to have is people who know the system well enough to say hey shit okay i'm going to shoot this guy roll the dice the way i think there's things you can do is like you can have a time limit on people's turn they can only take like 30 seconds or whatever. But also if people know the system, um, then they're going to fucking be like totally, they're, t- they're almost doing, they're playing the game themselves and the GM is just sort of there on the sidelines. But one of the things we did with the Zombie Yorks Quest, right, was that well, basically I think in order to get in, invested in, some, in, a, in a D&D campaign, you need to almost be excited yourself to make a character to understand what the world is you're going into, to kind of have a, but come with some prep. And I think a lot of the time, some of the people we've had on D&D, we've said, hey, can you come on D&D? And they're like, yeah, sure. Um, I, I'm not going to prepare anything. I want to come at this. I don't, you know, I, I'll, I'll be okay to RP once I'm there, but give me a character. It's like, well, I, I kind of don't want that. I kind of want you to talk to me about how you want, w- what your character is. I want you to write a little bit of backstory. I want you to have a thing, okay. a, pre- a bit of prep. And I think sometimes like, I think that makes it better, right? Because then you're more invested, you're more interested. I think High Rollers are really, I don't know if you've watched any of High Rollers. It's um, the Sunday D&D yeah, stream, yeah, which... Yeah. Mark Humes runs as a GM and that's very classic D&D and it's 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 great um, because all the characters kind of love their all the guys love their characters and you could tell and they're interested but I feel like there's no there should be there shouldn't be such a safety net well, yeah, so them, I, mean, I think what, what you're looking for is more of a Game of Thronesy. anyone could die in a horrible way at any time but there's a, some overriding goal that we hope they're going to get to and if we lose some people along the way, we can replace them with other people. Like maybe a D and D campaign that doesn't pull punches. And if the DM rolls a crit, and hey, your wizard just got shot in the face by an arrow, you'll have to have another character. So maybe you could even have people bring multiple characters with them that they can sort of go to if theirs gets killed. So they want to see if they can get there with the character that they, re- you know, like before they, they have to go back to another one, maybe. Something like, but with a bit yeah. more peril involved than the old... Well, me and You me miraculously and Tom... dodged the dragon breath again. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. This is like... Uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like um... that's just all my characters basically because I don't know how to play. So I, just, I also like... feel like the problem with D and D is everyone's got so much health and healing and revives and recoveries and all this bullshit that you know if someone gets stabbed through you know by or bitten by a bear, they're like, yeah, you took one wound. You've got seventeen left and a shield and a and a health and a renew and a phoenix down and all this bollocks. It's like fuck off. Like some of the systems are different. Okay, where they are a lot more brutal and serious. There's loads and loads of D and D systems out there. You know, me and Tom have played quite a few of them. And Yogg's Quest was this one where we kind of... The idea we had was this Left for Dead safe room mechanic, right? So if your character was stupid or unlucky or um, naive or got left behind or sacrificed, you decided to sacrifice yourself or do something heroic, sometimes, you know, that... Because in the zombie world, it kind of... It felt like you could meet up with new, new, new people along the way and they would be at a disadvantage because they wouldn't have had the experience that your guy did. Maybe they wouldn't have had the levels. Maybe they wouldn't have had the story as well. And the, the experience is like, oh yeah, okay, you did survive the bear attack. 
So, you know, now you're you're super wounded and stuff but, and gross. But, you know, that maybe that opens up other options as a result. You know, maybe people will take pity with you and let you in or, you know, whatever. Like there's it feels like it feels like having a character to start with, but then having that grow and then being sad when they die, but also excited to pick up a new RP role yeah. quickly. Um, so, well, we, we I could know. do, I think, uh, maybe is, some kind of a post, post-apocalyptic thing, but that maybe doesn't just have fucking zombies. Uh, because it's... No, don't worry, we won't do zombies again, and we'll never do zombies okay. again. I mean, so when we do your quest, it'll be, so... it'll be a different yeah. setting. Zombies pretty played out. I think even post-apocalypse is pretty played out, but I, I, the thing I like about post-apocalypse is that if all you have is a wasteland of something that once was, a, like, you know, a thriving, normal place or whatever... Um, there's lots of different stories you could have there, sort of thing, well, and you're not what just about a space you're not one? constantly running away from hordes of zombies necessarily. Yeah. You know, but what about you, like you a, could just... like there was a there was a game system called Traveler, which they then made into like a, kind of like there was a, a, a sort of later version of Traveler, which is really good. But Mark will know about it. But it, I think if we were the, the crew of a ship, that would be kind of cool, not in a Star Trek sense. But in the, the the travel universe is kind of there's multiple major powers and you're just like a trader or like a mercenaries or you know you just go around yeah. doing jobs. So it's like being elite, like in the, it's like the we game did, elite. We did that. But, we did a similar one to that. The one before was it the one before last year? I remember year? you. You guys were dressed up as space, space people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the space one. But yeah, I it know. A, like it if was it a had. Cool idea. Yeah, if it mean, had you know, maybe a bit more. You need another to person. It. Bingo! You bump into an escape pod, or you land on a planet, and there's a, a a nobleman there fleeing persecution or something. You know, you could chuck it all together. Like we did the Star Wars one, and I felt like if a character had been killed, we could find another character, and it would fit in with the the story. But it's it's the challenge of role playing games. Is you know you want to play. You've built up a character to level ten. You don't want to just be given a level ten character because it doesn't. You don't feel like you've grown that person to that level. No. Yeah. And yeah, it is tricky. I think it the is. difficulty that I have is that when I want to make videos uh, for um, on D and D and things like this, I want to have it be uh, twenty minute videos, right? I don't want to have it be a, a four hour live stream right. every week, you know, because I think that's, I mean, that's that's what the D and D pace is pretty slow because of the the nature of the dice rolling and the mechanics and all that stuff. But I think as you get more adept at it, more comfortable with it, you get better, and I think that. With with practice comes a bit of expertise. Um, I guess I don't I don't want to stifle the kind of energy and creativity though. That, that, with and, with and the, rulesiness, yeah. And and I don't know. It, I don't want it. I, I don't want it. Oh yeah, it's a balance. And we're working on figuring out what 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 the best way to do it is. And there's a reason we haven't done a York's Quest for a while. It's because we're sort of trying to figure out how we want to. A good system future. for it. Yeah. But it is a fucking amazing experience to like just just take. It is on, very um, fun to do. Take on like a a, a a skin of of someone someone else and and play a an exciting and dynamic and good story with actual real f- fear. Like if you if you actually are attached to this character and you actually are feared of them, I think that, that a lot of the time people in D anD D just are reckless. They run around, they shoot everyone. They don't have any. They're, they're like a psychopath. Yeah. They don't have any feelings that there's going to be consequences because it doesn't. You know. I think I think that's what I want to try and avoid in future a little bit because I don't think you need to be a, uh, you know a jester in these games. You don't need to just kind of just be this ca- just chaotic. Psychopath. All right, all right, okay. Point yeah. taken. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You can be like a, a mong man or a fatty or whatever you yeah, want. A feeder. Yeah. I'm going like, to be a feeder next time. It's going to be great. I'll, I can be the chubby uh, if you want to be my feeder. <laughs> any day. Yeah. Is that what you're there going to be. Bournemouth for? One night sold out tonight. Pyrian <laughs> Flax on so, stage. Oh eating my God. KFC. Pyrian eats Getting Bournemouth. It's going to Bournemouth <laughs> to eat at everything. Just bring me your food. A queue of people <laughs> you... offering me foods. KFC, master. A hot dog with relish. Oh, yeah. Feed me. <laughs> I need somebody to file down my bed sores. Come on. <laughs> oh Who's my up? god. <laughs> and on that bombshell. So let's get to the questions. We got any questions? Yeah, right. let's get to the questions. I've got I've got one longish question. It's not really a long question itself, but okay. the answers might be long. And then followed up by a really short one. All right. Yep. So first one is from a guy named Andrew Markham. He asks, What type of prison inmate would each of you be? So I, when I read that, I instantly thought of Andy Dufresne because he's like, you know, the role model prisoner that everybody thinks that they would be like, right? You know, yeah. go in there, carve out chess pieces, 
Um, you know, he he try to convince prison. people that you were innocent yeah. and then escape out of a shit pipe. He was convicted was of the murder of again? his wife. Wrongly convicted of the uh, murder of his yeah. wife. Yeah, he's wrongly convicted. Even though he... Because she was having an affair, right? And um, he he killed her or no, no. He, allegedly he went, killed yeah, her. But he, he went there to... He had a gun. He had something to drink. He went to confront them. And the, the, the yeah. lawyer says like... And uh, she was dead. What were you hoping to do he goes i don't know just scare them maybe and then he changed his mind drove home and went to sleep and the wake up wakes up the next morning of course his wife and her lover were killed and then he's wrongly uh convicted of it and sent down the thing about right. andy dufresne is is that he doesn't change when he's in prison like it, prison to him is not a transformative experience he's the same when he goes in and he's the same when he comes out he, ne he you know he never lets it break him and i think that's the message of the movie is that you go into prison and if you're Andy Dufresne about it, you never change. You make you let on that you've been changed, but you've ne you never change because he, he always had this hope. Because remember, they said to him at the start, one of the things that Red says to him is, "Don't trust hope in here, Andy. Dangerous thing to do. Don't trust, you know." <laughs> and it's like he just goes, uh, "Oh, geez, Red. Uh, you know, maybe I could uh, tunnel out of here, buddy. Wink, wink. If you know what I mean." <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Andy. Tunnel. What? And so, in the you know, he's, he's always had that hope. Because he's always been working towards getting free. So I think that, that yeah. that's the thing about it, the, the perfect prisoner. I would be the prisoner who would go in there and kill themselves because I would be so miserable. It is, it is my greatest fear in life, being locked up, especially wrongfully. The idea of being yeah. sent down, no hope, that's it, I'm stuck forever. I would probably be one of the guys that hangs himself with a sock in his, uh, in his cell. I just, I couldn't handle it. I could not handle it. I I mean, I like to think that I would be the guy who went in there who had like a barcode tattoo, like mysteriously on his forehead and nobody <laughs> knew who he was. And then I was just, you know, controlled the prison and through fear and nobody would fuck with me sort of thing. But I think it's probably pretty likely that I would either end up killing myself yeah. or uh, I would just be so fucking um, traumatized by the whole thing that I just wouldn't be the same person at all. Yeah. I'd just be like a yeah. slobbering mess awful. in the corner sort of thing. Yeah, like, it would be I, pretty bad. I think bad. the idea of being treated like less than a human being, uh, especially especially if you were in there and you, you, you weren't given time to reflect on your deeds because you had done no deeds. You just shouldn't have even been there. And there are people who've spent like 20, 30 years in prison for something they didn't do. And I think yeah. that that is the greatest torture that you can inflict on someone is locking them up, taking away their life. Like that's the thing. Every every five years that goes by, I'm thinking what all those things I've missed, everything well, I could have like, done. Like I yeah. think we are very Americanized in this country and this culture by by what we see on TV. We have this idea that going to prison will be like an American prison, okay? I don't think it'll be like, I think it'll be like porridge. You, do you ever watch porridge? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's very British, right? Yeah, it's very British, you know, yeah. Kind of run down, slightly, you know, the, the prison really is like damp some looking. old, yeah. sort of damp castle with like cobblestone walls, you know, like a yeah. fucking iron gate and like, you know, a big old fucking key and the yeah. warden, the warden and the jailers are all in like smart uniforms with hats on, you know, and I don't know, I feel like, I feel like a British prison would be is a little bit different to, to but I mean, I'm sure it'd still be overcrowded and gross, and they'll be like, but I, I guess everyone will have English accents in there, you know, all the all the other criminals from other countries will be extradited. Yeah. Off, you know, it will be it'll be a bunch of fucking Brits in there, and you know, I'm sure they they're all gonna like watch the football, and you know, I think it's not gonna be what we think, you know, what we think about it from from American TV. Not that I don't, not that I know, you know, or want to find out either. I think I'd probably be a, a, a fucking piece of meat in there god I'd probably fucking, they'd just snap me but you know sexuality is pretty fluid i could probably get used to it i could yeah. get into like the mole man group and the like chubby <laughs> groups and yeah, like, kind of sure. figure out carve out my niche yeah and eventually the mole men will tunnel their out to the dig dig the hole out of there the thing is though is prison is fucking hardcore man like the thing is if you're gonna go to prison okay i think that if you're doing something and you're not in prison but it's something that could get you in prison, make sure that whatever you're doing um, hooks you up big time, gives you lots of connects inside prison because <laughs> inevitably when you go to prison, you're going to be fucked if you don't. Yeah, you like it, like Omar in The Wire. When he goes in, he's got two fucking old school homies yeah. who like, you know, watch his back, give him the phone book so that he doesn't get stabbed God, that's and such stuff. a great scene when they come in and he's it like preparing really to fight and they're like, 
Butch he sent us. And he's like, oh, shit. And they pack him up with the phone books. They give him a little plastic knife that he cuts yeah. that guy's balls off Fucking with. Fucking duct tape that shit to him and everything. And it's just like, oh, man, that's what you want. That's what you want to get. You want to go into jail and you want to have something like that waiting for you. Like guys that you know are going to have your back. If you're going into jail for something really dumb and you don't have any connects in jail and stuff, you're fucked yeah. basically. You are you you are literally going to get fucked and probably just have a miserable fucking time as well. You know what? You're I, just uh, going to turn into somebody's fucking meat. Well, yeah, yeah you, you say that. Like, it's going to be but awful. I was, I was at university with a guy. He, he When we got there, the day that we moved in, we so I was like uh, 19. And he uh, was 40 and he'd come that day from prison. Like he'd been released that day and he'd managed to get released so he could go to university and sort of turn his life around and stuff. And he'd, yeah. he'd been inside for armed robbery. He'd robbed the post office. Um, mul- he'd robbed multiple post offices before they finally caught him. And we were always asking him, like, what was it like in prison? And he said, I mean, this would have been in the, the 80s and the 90s. And he said, um, it wasn't really what you think at all. It was just mainly fighting, like a lot of people fighting. Because they're bored and they hate the guards and they're miserable and the food is bad and it's it's a depressing environment and it's kind of hopeless and it's a lot of fighting. And so he fought constantly and he said, if you're not prepared to fight all the time, you're just going to get the shit kicked out of you. You're like, none of the rape stuff, like he said, he hardly saw any of that at all. And, and to, to, to his knowledge, like it didn't, it didn't happen apart from he said one guy. But the thing is, once you're known as being that kind of person who's like raping in other inmates, unless you're part of some kind of gang that all do it, you're, you're like, you're not cool with the rest of the prisoners because they, you know, they, they don't want that kind of thing happening for obvious reasons. Yeah. So it's not something that happens as widely as people make out. I think it's obviously a scary thing. And the, the idea of it is what puts people off prison in a lot of way, I think. But he said the main thing was he just fought constantly. And he was hard as fuck. Like he would fight the guards all the time just for something to do. And they'd beat the shit out of him and he'd fight them back. And that was it. Like he, he, it sounds, it just, it's just rough. It's really yeah. fucking rough. And I am a complete softy. Like the idea of going to yeah, prison, I'm a to total fight. pussy. And they do things like jugging. I, I read a book called A Life Inside. And one of the things they do is like when they're making their tea, they'll get a pot of jo- boiling water and just pour that jug of boiling water over someone if they're like pissed off with them. But it, <laughs> oh my God. But it could be something as simple as you sat in the wrong seat. Like it, if there's a, you know, when you watch TV, everybody's got their agreed seats, but they don't just go up and say, oh, I'm sorry, that's my seat. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll move. They just go and jug you because that way the message has been sent. If you go up and say, excuse yeah. me, that's my seat, and they say, fuck off, you've then got to fight them there and then. You take, you got to jug them Cut back. out the middleman. You, you do jug them. You just jug. go, bam, jugged. That's my jug fucking seat. Jug two, jug harder. Yeah, exactly. I jugged, you fool. Get yeah, jugged. I'm having trouble carrying this 16 gallon <laughs> jug of boiling water, but I'm going to jug you, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to jug the fuck out of you. <laughs> yeah, we joke about it, but you know, one day when we're all in jail, because let's face it, we've all done shit. Um, that we're not at liberty to speak about on here. You know, we're not going to be gonna laughing. Be used as evidence. We're not going to be laughing. Let's put uh, it that Mr. way. Mr. Lovett, so when you said you'd done shit, what was that actually referring to? <laughs> we would like to present evidence that Mr. Lovett did indeed jug his lawyer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, we motion he remain in prison for the rest of his able life, please. This is a second degree jugging offense. We got a jugger. We got, a, we we got, a jugger. Jugger. We got reports of a jugger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poor one, one one jugging name. in progress. <laughs> you could be like Superman's oh, arch nemesis. Bring raincoats. Repeat, bring raincoats. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, we got yeah. a jugging in cell block two. We got a jugging going on. So, Please a send recap. It to dogs. Lewis would uh, be fluid with his sexuality. Yep. Uh, I would be crying a lot and Pyrian would kill himself. I'm, no, Those I'm, are the kind of no, inmates I'm, we I'm, would uh, be. What a fucking horrible I'm question. Jugging. I'm jugging yeah. people. That's it. Day yeah, one. Be the, they're yeah. like, oh, hi, work for the prison. I'm like, jugs, bitch! Just jugging people. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching uh, Orange is the New Black. I don't know how realistic that is, but Ho- I enjoyed watching unrealistic, it. Hopelessly unrealistic, I think. But it's yeah. a good show. I like it. But It's a good yeah, show, really but yeah, it's it. probably not super realistic. You know what I would love to do? I would love to somehow be close with the guards where I could like make a scenario where I was walking down the entire cell block in the middle of the night whistling like Omar used to do like in the streets sort of thing and then everybody be like oh shit the jugger's coming <laughs> and then I would just pick someone the jugger's coming motherfuckers <laughs> just jug someone randomly like that would be fucking sweet but I would never be that inmate 
It's like, like he, he, it's like a jug like running along the bars. <laughs> and, like, everyone, everyone like chucks their cigarettes ding, out ding, into ding, it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> they can just hear a, a, hear a, a distant kettle boiling somewhere. <laughs> you just hear like a couple of little splishes and splashes. He's going to boil the kettle. <laughs> He's going to chuck something. <laughs> Shit, yeah, that'd be fucking great. God, uh, how how are we uh, laughing about people getting covered in a jug of boiling water? Like unbelievable. Uh, what scumbags. Know. Next, uh, so listen. That- our, our our last question uh, before we wrap up is from Jonathan DeRidder. Um, and he says, when are you guys going to do a Hearts of Iron game and with who? And we can say to you right now, Jonathan DeRidder, we've done one, the, the three of us, and it'll be on Team Double Dragon at some point soon. Yeah, hopefully. it might be out already. We'll find yeah. out. And I'm we're planning and on doing another around. one as well. So if that one isn't enough for you, Jonathan DeRidder, there's a whammy coming at some point. Yeah, but I might try and I might try and get other people involved or do it for like the Civ Channel, something like that. Because I think it'd be fun to get it, get, yeah. a, get a slightly different game to the first one we did. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe maybe a competitive one actually. Might, and might Stellaris is on the card somehow as well too, at some point possibly. So that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Eventually, maybe. All right. Well, um, thanks for listening, and um, you know, stay 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 strong, folks. Frosty and Fight stuff. Fight the power. And, Peace. Fuck yourselves and bye.